Is uh, George Eaton, the Roger Scruton assassin and deputy editor of the left-wing New Statesman magazine, a liar and a disgrace to journalistic ethics? I ask the question only because Douglas Murray has publicly accused him of being a liar uh, and suggested that if he was not, he could release the tape recording of the interview with Sir Roger and put all of our dreadfully suspicious right-wing minds to rest. Uh, but young Master George has not responded to Douglas Murray at all. In fact, he's decided to lie completely doggo, it would seem. Uh, his Instagram account is now private and his Twitter account are eerily silent. I emailed Comrade Eaton at the New Statesman and got an auto-reply stating he's out of office until April the 29th, uh, which seems rather convenient in terms of the magazine's presumed embarrassment. Uh, but Comrade Eaton hasn't entirely disappeared. He did find the time to write a shameless, dishonest and unrepentant article for the discredited New Statesman, in which he stated, quote, I stand by the accuracy of my interview, but apologise for my social media conduct, end quote. And I assume part of his social media conduct is the deleted tweet about his delight in getting Sir Roger sacked because he is, as Comrade Eaton puts it, a right-wing racist and homophobe. Uh, unfortunately for young Master George, though, the, the uh, tweet remains in the public domain uh, for all of us to see. But leaving aside his viciously unpleasant and all too typical left-wing social media behaviour, uh, Comrade Eaton has the shameless temerity to suggest his interview was accurate. He has the brazen gall to write, quote, the allegation has since been levelled by the Spectator's associate editor Douglas Murray and others that I lied or invented quotes by Scruton and even that I have retracted sections of the interview. This is an untrue and baseless claim. End quote. Is that so, Comrade Eaton? Let's have a, an objective, honest look at things, shall we? Uh, you stated Sir Roger was an Islamophobe because he thought the term Islamophobia was a propaganda term invented by the Muslim Brotherhood uh, to stop legitimate criticism of Islam, and that Sir Roger talked about the, quote, invasion of huge tribes of Muslims from the Middle East entering Hungary, a remark which neither Scruton nor Murray has defended, end quote. Okay, first of all, there is a huge global concerted push by Islamic organisations to stop any criticism of Islam, uh, any criticism at all. This is simply a fact, and no one can be termed an Islamophobe for recognising this to be a fact. Uh, secondly, what was the context with regard to Sir Roger noting huge tribes of Muslims invading Hungary? It doesn't sound like the sort of words Sir Roger would use of migrants, uh, particularly as Hungary isn't accepting any Muslim migrants, uh, much to the fury of the EU. I suspect what Sir Roger was talking about was the very real historical invasions of Hungary by Islam over many centuries. And did you ask him if this is what he meant? And did he clarify his point? Uh, if you didn't ask him, why not? If you did, what did Sir Roger say? Perhaps if you release the tape of this conversation, we could, uh, we could find out. Uh, you know, you, uh, otherwise, you must forgive us for thinking uh, that you're a liar and a disgrace to ethical journalism. Uh, you go on to say in your article that, uh, quote, perhaps most remarkably, he, uh, Scruton, Comment, commented on the rise of China, they're creating robots out of their own people. Each Chinese person is a kind of replica of the next one, and that is a very frightening thing. Douglas Murray contends in a piece published on the Spectator website that Scruton's use of they refers to the Chinese Communist Party. That may be open to interpretation. Scruton did not refer directly to the party in our conversation, uh, but the quotation itself is accurate and Scruton's choice of words is at best ill-advised. End quote. OK, Georgie boy, on the basis of this quote, you label Sir Roger a racist, by which I suppose, you know, you, you took to mean all those 
ghastly Chinese uh, all look the same, uh, don't they? With their, with their, their similar shaped eyes and their similarly uh, hued skin tone. Uh, but did you ask him if this is what he actually meant? Now, Unlike you, I've read a great deal of Sir Roger Scruton's work over the years, and I have never heard him utter a single comment over a 50-year period in which he abused a race of people with regard to their racial characteristics. What I have heard him talk about, though, uh, talk about a great deal, is the wickedness of totalitarian communism, uh, which seeks total conformity of thought on pain of death. And it would seem fairly obvious to all but the most disingenuous of perverted political activists that Sir Roger Scruton was talking about the Chinese Communist Party here. But I suppose the only way we'll know is if you release the tape of your conversation. It's so easy to clear these misunderstandings up, you see, Georgie boy, simply by releasing the tape. And to reiterate my earlier point, if you refuse to carry out this one simple act, you'll have to forgive us for thinking that you're a liar and a political activist rather than a journalist uh, and a craven, wicked apologist for the 20th century's greatest killing machine. In actual fact, I know you are a communist sympathiser because you admitted as such in an interview earlier this year uh, with the Cambridge Varsity magazine where you said, quote, I've always had an interest in Marxism. I think as a school of thought it uh, retains a lot of analytical power. So it's an interesting perspective to explore, but for a long time these ideas didn't feel particularly relevant to British politics. End quote. So... I put it to you, Georgie boy, that you hate Sir Roger with a fanatical frenzy simply because he has always spoken out against the many evils of your beloved totalitarian communist ideology, no? And you conclude your desperately dishonest article with these words, uh, quote, The argument over whether the government was right to sack Scruton will continue. For my part, I never intended to entrap Scruton. Our conversation was wide-ranging, and I stand by the interview. It was not my words that caused Scruton sacking, but his own intemperate comments. End quote. Now, this... Reminds me of the Eric Morecambe and Andre Previn sketch, where Eric makes a uh, plinkety-plonk pig's ear of Grieg's piano concerto, and Andre Previn accuses Eric of playing all the wrong notes, uh, to which Eric replies he's playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. And Eric made this highly amusing, but using Sir Roger's words, not necessarily in the right order, is not quite as amusing at all, is it, Comrade Eaton? And if you didn't intend to entrap him, why did you twist his words and why did you celebrate his sacking? You lied about him in your original article, and when caught out, you continue to lie today. In this respect, your behaviour replicates the behaviour of all left-wing extremists, uh, shameless, totally shameless, totally dishonest, and frighteningly allied with the communist dialectic that there is no such thing as truth and that morality simply means anything, uh, anything at all, no matter how immoral, no matter how inhumane, no matter how dishonest, as long as it furthers the socialist revolution. Anyway, that's enough from me. As it stands today, we all think you're a, uh, that you are both a liar and a thoroughly repellent human being, and that the new statesman is simply an extreme left-wing organ which uh, propagates fake news. And why should anyone believe anything you or your magazine write, uh, write about ever again? Uh, but this, this can all change in your favour, of course. Release the tape, Georgie boy. Release the tape and prove you are not a liar, that you are not a fraud, and that you really do possess, deep within your communist heart, a little, tiny, teensy-weensy shred of journalistic and humanistic integrity. So over to you, comrade. Over to you. Release the tape. <laughs>